Air. What's good with y'all, man? It's that time again, man. This is your Walking Dead recap of season seven. And I did miss an episode. I did miss episode six. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a twofer. You're going to get an episode six recap along with episode seven because episode eight is airing today at nine o'clock. I don't know. Is this the uh, finale? I'm not sure. But anyway, let's get into it. So episode six is one of those episodes where the Walking Dead uh, writers like to just give one episode to like a character and they just get their whole special episode and normally it's a character no one cares for which again it was this time because i really don't care for this character so the character we're talking about is tara um some of you guys probably don't even know who that is i didn't even know who she was when i was watching it i remember her from season six but season six was a boring season to me and i barely kept up with all of it so i didn't even like her then um, so she's one of those expendable characters that could get killed off and no one probably wouldn't care about it. And she was also accompanied by another character that no one cares about, Dr. Dre, a.k.a. Heath, um, with the fake dreads. Um, obviously, the real dreads in the show, but in real life, you know, those dreads are super fake. They look horrible. But anyway, um, she, him, you know, their last, well, last season, when they were attacking the Saviors at the little satellite place, you know, they took off together. And the, the episode actually starts off weird, so... This, this the episode starts off like past that part and then it goes back to the beginning of when you know the beginning part I don't know it's hard to explain so look the episode starts off like this so Tara washes up on the beach okay and two little girls are out there you know killing walkers and picking up supplies one of the little girls name is Rachel and she was like the youngest out of two the older name is Cindy so Rachel finds Tara on the beach runs over there and is like hey it's a bobble you know, or something like that, because apparently people in this in this uh, universe have they never seen a zombie movie or they never heard zombie before or something. Because every single group uh, crew has a different name for zombies. You know, uh, walkers. Then you had the geeks, and then you got uh, I forgot what they used to call them uh, with the uh, the governor. I forgot what he called them, but it was a weird name too. And then you got the bobbles. So she called her a bobble, and then Cindy looked at her, checked it out, was like, no, she's still alive. Now, Rachel, being a little savage that she is, she was still going to body uh, Tara. But Cindy was like, yo, yo, chill out. We're not going to kill her. We're going to see if she's going to survive um, and pull her ashore. So they pulled her to shore under some little trees or whatever. And Cindy left her with some supplies. Now, every once in a while, Cindy would come back to check on her and see if she would come too. Um, and at one point, Tara actually wakes up. But it was after Cindy, you know, stepped away from her and didn't know that she woke up. So Tara gets up takes you know her supplies gets the water drinks and all that stuff and she decides to follow cindy into the woods to see where she was going and lo and behold there is a whole village that cindy and rachel uh live in and it is a village full of females now we're going to get to why the whole village is filled with females later on but the whole village is filled with females so while tara's walking around this place checking everything out um uh she gets spotted uh, by one of the, uh, I guess the the gunmen in the village. Now they're all females, like I said. So they all took off at her, started shooting at her, pretty much trying to take her out. Um, and got to the point where Tara got surrounded, and everybody had a gun pointed at, uh, pointed at her. And the village leader was like, "Yeah, I'm pretty much done." Um, and Tara had to talk her way out of it. So Tara eventually got them to call down. She got the leader to not kill her because they didn't want any outsiders. Uh, in their village now there's a reason for this and I will get to that in a few minutes so Tara talked to her about it and they were like yeah man we um we got a group a group a group over in Alexandria you know we, we uh we took out the saviors over at the uh, satellite place man we took them out and then the village leader decided to break the news to her she was like whoa you didn't take out the saviors that's only a little bit of it Negan's army is humongous. Like, there's tons more. You only took out a small portion of them. Um, and she was like, whoa, really? And she was like, yeah. And now you, you're going to bring danger to us. You just started an all-out war. And Negan's not going to stop until he wins. So she's like, well, look, you guys can you know, team up with our crew. You know, we, we can we can take out Negan's gang. And they're like, no, we can't. And, uh, and then that's when the, the story was broke down to Tara about the village. So... The reason the village is filled with women is because Negan decided to kill every male that was in that village over the age of 10 years old. So whoever was a male over the age of 10, they took them out so they couldn't have an uprising. 
Um, so that is why it's typically nothing but females in that crew. You may see like some small young boys, uh, but other than that, they killed all the grown, you know, the ten year olds and and older who were males out the whole crew. Um, now with this being said, you know, Tara was like, you know, she was heartbroken that that happened, and some of the village women didn't like that. You know, she caused this problem with the. Uh, with the the saviors niggas crew and was like hold on we gotta take her out because we don't want her going back and telling anybody about our village and bringing the saviors back over here to get us because they were hiding from the saviors and they didn't want them to come back so they were like yeah we gotta kill her so they went out and tried to you know pretty much take Tara out chase her down try to kill her and then she was saved by Cindy yet again um and Cindy evacuated her out of the village um after you know dispatching one of the the uh one of the uh, gunmen from the village so this is where we get the the backstory of how Tara ended up where she ended up so pretty much Heath and Tara went out to look for supplies and they were on some bridge and there was a truck on the bridge um, that was blocking away so they decided I think that she, I think that's what went on I can't remember right now but it, they tried to move the truck and the truck just tilts over and falls over it's a cement truck and lo and behold there were tons of walkers in that truck and then there were walkers around the truck so they pretty much got surrounded by walkers um and they were you know getting attacked heath was trying to, his best way to fight out of it and get to tara but tara got surrounded and on the bridge and was pretty much grabbed by a zombie <laughs> on the bridge and he was going to try to rescue her but he saw it was too dangerous and he decided to take off and the zombie pulled uh tara over the bridge with two other zombies holding on to her uh into the water under the bridge and then you know, I guess she didn't get bitten, so she somehow uh, made it all the way to shore alive. So that was the whole backstory of that. So then Tara makes it back to the uh, Alexandra. She meets with, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Eugene. And Eugene, I guess, breaks breaks the story to her that her girlfriend was killed, Denise. She was taken out. And, you know, she was crying and everything. But it didn't, it didn't show much of her crying. You know, it just showed like a little bit of it. And then pretty much she went out to go see if she could find uh, Heath she saw a zombie that had the same hair as Heath and thought it was him but it turns out it was oh man I just I just messed it up for you guys but hey she <laughs> she found out that it wasn't him um, and then she saw some clues to where he went in that was at the end of that episode now season 7 I mean episode 7 now episode 7 was pretty crazy episode so this was an episode with Carl in the back of that truck with Jesus um going to go take out Negan so on the way there uh I think Carl something happened with Jesus I think he hopped out to go do something else and Carl stayed in the truck he was like nah I'm gonna take this man out I don't know that's the only way this can be fixed so he stays in the truck um they get to one of the the places where uh Negan's hideout is uh two guys hop in the truck to you know pull some things out one of them ends up seeing Carl now Carl's holding the AR and he dumps on dude he takes him out take him out another guy uh, sitting outside the truck He's got his gun pointed at everybody Like everybody's like Surrounding the truck um, Another guy tries to lunge out He takes him out Pow out Take him out So then All the guys are just sitting there scared And just like Just making sure that he can't get out And Negan comes strolling around um, Unfortunately Carl didn't get the chance to take out Negan I don't know if he hesitated For me I was looking at it I was like Why is he not just shooting him um, And then before he could get a shot off Somebody grabbed his gun And took it away and now he's in the grasp of Negan. So, Negan's like, oh, man, you're a badass. I like you. Uh, you got to be a badass little kid to come out here and try to, you know, take me out by yourself. I like that. So, he pretty much kind of takes Carl under his wing. I thought he was going to kill him. But he takes him under his wing. Um, he's like, uh, come with me. Uh, he takes him, shows him uh, all his wives and everything. And this is how you can see how sadistic and crazy this dude Negan is. He shows him all his wives. He's like, man, why always do the same thing? You know, have different girlfriends. And all these wives are either people he kills, women, or uh, guys that did something disrespectful to him and he just took their wife. So, had like about seven of them in there. Um, and he was showing them a call. So, later on, he takes Carl in the room with him. And he's just pretty much kind of like, you know, messing with him a little bit. He's like, you killed two of my men. And I don't like that. And you owe me a lot now. I should kill you, but you know, whatever. So he asked Carl to take off his gauze. Pretty much like bitching him. He's like, take off your, your gauze on your eye. 
Carl takes off the gauze on his eye. You can see the, the hole uh, in his eye. And, and Negan, being as savage as he is, he's like, Ew! Oh my God! Whoa! Whoa, nobody's ever going <laughs> to... He's like, nobody's ever going to uh, come at and try to attack you after seeing that. Wow! And then, he, like, Carl starts to cry and sob. He's like, oh, man. And this is where you kind of see the same softer side of Negan. And he's like, oh, oh, man. This, in a time like this, it's hard to to remember that you're just a kid. I'm sorry, man. Um, But, man, that eye, dude, like, man, that's that's a badass eye. Nobody's going to attack you for that, man. Keep that gauze off. Uh, you, that, that's intimidating, man. You're gonna, you look so tough with it. They're trying to, you know, pump his head back up. And then that's where he goes back to being sadistic again, though. He's like, okay, but you killed two of my men. I need you to sing me a song. Uh, well, not me, actually. I need you to sing Lucille a song. Um, so he had his baseball bat that he murdered Glenn and, uh, and what you call it with. And he's like, yeah, I need you to sing a song. So Carl, reluctantly and scared, sings him a song for his bat. And he's like, yeah, that's, that's nice. Um, then he asks Carl to follow him again. So next scene, he takes Carl into this room. And it's like a bunch of people uh, just sitting inside. Like the, it looks like a boiler room. And he has one guy like on a chair tied to it. So this guy was someone who uh, tried to uh, meet with his wife uh, while Negan was with him. And he tried to sneak and meet her. So he had to teach him a lesson. And he wanted Carl to see. So what he did was it was the same thing he did to... Uh, the other gentleman whose wife he took, uh, he took a hot iron and mushed it up against his face and melted his face off. Uh, and he was like, and this, that is power. That is how you have respect and power in today's world. Um, and I think that was the it for most of it. I don't remember. I can't remember anything else happening other than that. Um, oh, yeah, Michonne. So Michonne was another part of this episode. So we got to actually see her again and actually being Michonne instead of being you know soft Michonne as we've gotten after she's been with Rick and everything um so she decides that she is going to go and take out Negan as well uh so what she did was she draw a bunch of uh walkers out to follow her and she dispatched them and killed so many of them that uh when one of her saviors one of Negan's saviors went out to go look for supplies they would have to stop and when she stopped, she pretty much carjacked the uh, person, hopped in the car, had a gun pointed at her, well, took her gun and had a gun pointed at her and told her to take her to Negan's hideout. Uh, so, yeah, Michonne was back to being a badass Michonne like she always was. So that was another good part of the episode. But I think I covered everything that happened in episode six and seven. Um, leave a like in the comment section below. I know I don't have any gameplay in the background, but I want this to upload pretty quickly. If I had a gameplay for this long of a video, it would take like two hours to upload, and it's already 7.23, so you wouldn't even see it until the next episode comes out. But anyway, this is your boy Tick, aka Game Fanatic, the Michael Jordan, the game, and also the Rebel YouTube Underground. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the recap of The Walking Dead, and I'll be back for episode 8, and I'm gone! Bye!